Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you a conversation that I had with Matthew Melig from Melig Perfumes a couple months back. We're going to talk about some of his fragrances, the impetus behind them, uh, how the notes work together, and he's just kind of a wealth of information, and I found it very, very enjoyable. So it's quite long, so if you're really into it, get yourself a snack or whatever, or come to back to it in parts. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed chatting with him. He's so interesting to talk to. He's a self-taught perfumer. I love his fragrances. He's also Canadian, which always excites me. But I think the thing that I appreciate about him the most is that not only is he self-taught, he's willing to share what he's learned with others. And I just found him to be a very, very wonderful person. So Sonetta from Untamed Perfumes is also in there a little bit. She was kind enough to kind of do the recording for us. It was really, really a thrill to be able to chat with him about the fragrances and just interact with different materials and whatnot. We start by talking about different fragrances, attar oils, different stuff like that. And then we get into materials, different materials in the end. Uh, but some of the fragrances that I smelled, I'm just absolutely in love with. So anyway, are you ready to go on this journey with me? If you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the Weird and Wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And also, I will have all of Matthew's information. So his Instagram, his uh, his website, and also he has a blog uh, that he's started. So I'm going to leave all of the information uh, and also all the fragrances that are mentioned. They'll all be listed down below as well. So are you ready? Let's get started. Look at this is Matthew so, Melick. So this boy. is the sample back of all of your fragrances or... Most of the ones that I have out at the moment. Okay. I'm not even sure. I didn't even count them. I think there's 13 here. So there's nine perfumes. And then there is three oh, or geez. four. I'm yeah, being attacked so by oil. this little guy that wants to give me kisses. She's insane. And four attar oil perfumes. Now, what's an attar oil? Well, um, you know, just most, most, people, most people think of perfumes in the last basically as... Uh, perfumes that are um, cut or diluted with using alcohol. And so the skin's like uh, are regular type perfumes, more diffusive, uh, a sort of diffusive, airy feeling to them. Okay. And they s s reach off the body and create silage. And uh, oil perfumes tend to be a bit warmer and closer to the body. And um, basically, I would say from maybe Turkey, all of Islamic countries, but also including India, and they use a lot of uh, oil perfumes. Okay. So, um, itar or attar, I think it's one of the Indian languages. I think it's Hindi. It just basically means um, perfume. So yeah, they come in these sorts of packs. Logo, logo pressed into it. Super cool. Yeah. I love this, actually. That's really funky. Of course, can I show... Do you mind if I show them this? Yeah, yeah These are the... The boxes and they are uh, burnt in with the logo which is super neat oh these are different than the one that you sent me so the lid just comes off like that yeah I'm always trying to sort of upgrade my packaging and do um, every year I get closer and closer towards my ideal what I cool senior will tell you the same thing it's like you're always looking to strive to craft a very very specific uh, mm, image or packaging or inserts of papers or choosing fonts and all sorts of different things. These oil perfumes are quite interesting. Even when I formulate the oil perfumes and when I formulate and create the alcohol perfumes, it's kind of a diff different thinking process. Actually. Okay. Usually the oil perfumes, I try to stick with nearly almost 100% natural materials and usually try to keep the formulas a little more simple. Why do you right. do that with? If you stick with all naturals and you're using oil, then you actually formulate things differently. Okay. Yeah. So you have different problems and then you have different qualities that actually come out in constructing an oil perfume. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's a simpler process, but it's a different process mm -hmm. and you're paying more attention to really, really good quality materials. Um, not that with the alcohol perfumes, I don't, it's not that I don't pay attention to the, um, uh, quality of the essential oils. I certainly do. Uh, but 
when you're constructing them, you have all sorts of different uh, uh, things and tricks you can play with. Right. And the basic difference comes down to if you're using all naturals, then you should construct a sort of lighter, more simple formula. Because if your formula is all naturals and you use lots and lots of heavy materials, it gets very, very muddy very quickly. Whereas with um, an alcohol-based perfume and a perfume where you can use synthetic or human isolated materials with naturals, you can use hundreds of different little touches of synthetic materials because they're much lighter. Like talking about the actual weight of the molecules, it's lighter and less complex than natural. So they can become muddy, but it's more difficult. To it's, make yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. They can stay clear idea. longer. Right. <laughs> so the formula length and size of the alcohol perfumes is like, could be like this long, whereas right. the naturals, it might be like this long. Okay. So there's all sorts of, it's a different philosophy. Yeah. It's a different way of thinking it's a different um audience it's a different but they're both great and sonata have you ever made like have you d worked Straight with oils oil perfume? Not yet. okay soon that's what i'm gonna get some bottles <laughs> okay okay yeah, so yeah. so ideas, on the horizon <laughs> in the oils you've you've put uh more naturals in them correct yeah i think some of them are like just 100 percent natural um, and then what I do is like sell them in these and this size. Oh, uh, okay. So you can, I don't know if, have you smelled this one yet? I don't think so. So I this one. I don't think I smelt any of your oils. Well, I know I haven't. Okay. Okay. Basically just two materials. There's a couple little different ones in here, but it's basically two materials. One is Rose Auto. Rose Auto Ooh, is. that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rose Auto is one of the most beautiful materials in the world without yeah. a doubt. It's very, very nice. And then, um. Uh, an oud from Assam, uh, India, which is the eastern province. I think it's the fir one of the furthest east provinces in India that borders Bangladesh. And Assam's really famous for it. And so I paired these two together because uh, the Bulgarian rose auto, depending on when it's picked, so for example, let's say the roses were picked at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then they were processed at, processed at say, 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, there's a bit of time between the picking and the processing, and they actually rot. And there's a little bit of a muskiness, actually, to Rose Auto, if you smell it. That's really fascinating. Yeah, when you buy good quality Rose Auto, it'll be kind of a green color. Not a dark green, but kind of a yellow green color. And it'll be solid at, I don't know, say for the Americans, like 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 right. degrees Fahrenheit. So like up to like 15 degrees Celsius. But if, you, if you're in, in, in the heat, it would be liquid. But right. in, in, in a cold room, rose auto will be solid. So that's a really good way to detect the quality. But you got those two. And I think I put a little bit of vanilla in here, maybe, um, if I remember correctly. I have a formula. But it's basically just those two things. And then with organic cocoa oil. Okay. Because if it were just those two things, this would be like $1,000. Yeah. Right. And so, well, uh, but yeah. it's strong <laughs> enough. And you can smell like the, there's a difference. So. You can smell, uh, there's also orris butter in here. Mm. And so I don't know if you can, the, the powdery um, texture to this one, if you go like this, it's actually a pretty good idea to do that. Um, you can smell probably the powdery aspect of the orris butter there. Mm -hmm. And the rose auto itself is a bit powdery. Yeah. But then you can also smell um, the kind of uh, vegetal rot. Yeah. And also the rot of the oud, uh, the East Indian oud. Okay. But it's not too stinky. Actually, it's earthy. It's earthy. Yeah, that's really fascinating. <laughs> yeah. So like, it's very okay, floral so and is... sweet and a little bit barnyard. A little bit like blue cheese. I was going to say, like skanky, like barnyardy. Blue cheese, yeah. But kind of, it's kind of. Yeah, I've talked about the fact that I like a little bit of skank. <laughs> yeah. It's very sexy. It's very, very yeah, sexy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But it's a lot more like when you said rose and nude, mm. I was anticipating almost a little feminine and i would say no. this is way masculine anybody can wear this one for sure yeah with, with any of my oil perfumes they're absolutely 100 percent unisex yeah i think most of my perfumes are kind of that way i would I say so the idea with this one is you want to put this on close to your body right right because this is like you know kind of come hither it's very yeah. sexy like you know I you agree. wear it yeah so um that's the quality of right a, and so is this Oh, see, now it's changing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
change. So now I'm getting more of the rose. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rose auto is a magical material. It's absolutely my favorite mm. material. It's there's nothing in the world like it. Nothing. Well, and That's just it. the fact that it starts to rot in that little bit of time. Yeah. And I totally know what you mean about the yellow and green, because if you see a rose that's rotting even on the stem, mm -hmm. or, you know, when it's dying, mm -hmm. it, it goes that yellowy. That's neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you grew up in the countryside, you said you grew up on the farm. Yeah. Like, if you cut grass and then it starts to rot. Yeah, like totally. It's a, so that's why I paired it with this East Indian wood. No, just to let your fans know. Um, if you get an East Indian, like a Hindi oud, and it's really rotten and stinky, it's not good quality. It's okay. very often not a good quality. What you want, if you're looking for a very good quality oud, is you want a really ambery aspect, especially if it's from Assam. It should be round and not smoky, but kind of, yeah, a little bit smoky, fluffy, suede-like, very, very round. And like almost like a benzoin, like an amber quality to it. And it should never be harsh. So if you get an oud and it's like a nail polish or like a gasoline sharp, that's Shuck. shitty oud. Yeah. Now, yeah. now that like, so it is animalic to me. Like it the, is. But now that it's starting to, and I still smell the barnyardy aspect, yeah. but it's down in the background and it's, the rose is a little bit more. Yeah. But it's got the it's suede, soft. There's a soft softness. Powdery. Yeah texture of it really cool at. yeah so i mean this is just like basically two materials this right is basically just two materials this one is also this one's absolutely 100 percent natural so this is a philosopher's path philosopher's what? path I, I didn't know we had one like that okay yeah. i'm excited i yeah. don't think i chose that one now either yeah excited. okay well yeah. the, well, the philosopher's path is actually it's it's a famous um walking uh path in kyoto Okay. In Japan, which is one of my favorite cities in the world. Great. Uh, have you been to Kyoto? No. Okay. It's a beautiful Not city. Not lived there for a while, right? I lived in Tokyo for a decade, okay. but I would often go to Kyoto because Kyoto is this ancient capital of Japan. It's the old one before Tokyo. And it's got, I think, literally 2,000 temples and gardens. And everybody there is an artisan. And oh, cool. um, yeah, it's all family businesses and you might see another, it, it's just fascinating. It's a yeah. fascinating place, especially if you like to make things by your hands. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the philosopher's path is kind of like, we, you have to smell it. I think I got lucky with this one. Um, this is forest butter, lavender absolute, uh, lavender oil made only from the flowers of the lavender. Okay. Um, this is Jasmine Absolute Grandiflorum from India. It's a really jammy, like purpley color. Like it's just gorgeous. Um, so it's Jasmine, Rose, Lavender, a little bit of orange on the top, but you can smell that. Very That's cool. all natural. Yeah. That's gorgeous. That's more okay, feminine. Okay, I'm getting a little bit more of the orange. Yes, I yeah. agree. See, I would say that this one is, I agree, unisex, like, well, yeah. honestly, anything is unisex, but, well, yeah. uh, but I'd say this leans masculine just because of the yeah. dude for me, Yeah. but this leans feminine. Mm. That's beautiful. That's, I think this is one of the best formulas I've ever made for sure. And the name it's is Philosopher's fit. Path? The Philosopher's Path. You know, I can't do lavender, but I'm still, I can, I can handle out. Well, this yeah. one's a, a little yeah. bit more essential oily feel. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's it, it it doesn't smell like sometimes lavender, synthetic y it smells prickly whereas this smells it's not prickly at all. That's why I and lavender so. absolute is quite quite different. And and lavender oil that's made only from the yeah. flowers is very very floral. It's not it doesn't yeah. have this okay. stemmy yeah it doesn't have any of the stemmy green. Not herbaceous. No, there's all sorts of different types of lavender. Like mm -hmm. the most herbaceous lavender is a, a thing called spike lavender. It basically smells okay. like lavender plus like rosemary. Right. So, yeah, and that's I good agree. for masculine barbershop sorts of things. And you're right, when we're, when we're talking about masculine feminine, we're talking more like um, historical references. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's for a matter of categorizing scent in, in the mind. I, I think anybody can um, wear anything. How do you find, uh, like, like the oils stick closer to the skin, right? The oils is that... purposely are meant to stick to the skin. So what I do recommend is if, um, if you're going on a date and, and, and you find a boy that you really like, ladies, okay, you know, or the opposite for women, uh, for the guys, whatever, or whatever, whoever you're going out with. Okay? <laughs> exactly. So um, you can definitely pair 
and oil oh, perfume. Oh, yeah. yeah. So now what you you're can talking. do, yeah. So what you can do is you can put on a bright, lighter, more citrusy, more diffusive perfume on your clothes or something on the outside, and then you put on an amber or something warmer towards the inside, like on your skin. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my perfumes are inspired by Kyoto or Japan because. Um, it's, too it's a fascinating culture. It really is very interesting. So there's a couple of traditional top notes in Japanese um, incense. One of them is uh, menthol um, or eucalyptus. Okay. Okay. I love that. Yeah. What's Freaking that one? love it. What is it? It's the silver mm. pavilion. Silver pavilion. You haven't smelled this one. It's got. I was gonna say crystal mouth. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It's got eucalyptus. Oh yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I, I love I, the temple. Of, or it, do you call it Temple of Horus yeah. or Horus? I call it Temple of Horus. Okay, that's what I thought. The Temple of Horus formula is taken actually literally from the Temple of Horus, uh, walls of the Temple of right. Horus. It's a very, very basic morning incense. Uh, so the Temple of Horus is an Egyptian morning incense. Uh, and the Egyptians had thousands, like did so many hundreds, probably thousands of different incense recipes for specific times of year. This is, this formula is a fresh, bright, crisp um, cedar wood and frankincense. And then this, uh, the Silver Pavilion oil perfume, is um, a kind of minty opening, right? Which is actually, so you've got Egypt in one hand and then ja Japan on the other, but it's also opens with this crisp, um, traditional Japanese formula where you have, I think it's either Borneo crystals or menthol crystals and then ginger, um, sandalwood, and then oud uh, on the bottom. And it transitions down from very, very bright and light through to sort of a leathery oud eventually. Can I smell it together? Go, yeah, they go very nicely together. And what's interesting about these mm. two perfumes is that they're very, very fresh, very bright, the Horus is kind of a citrus, right? Because frankincense is quite citrusy. And then the Silver Pavilion is a crystally menthol type, type of brightness. Um, but they both end up smelling over a couple hours their incense perfumes. It's kind of fun because most of the time people associate incense with like dark, ambery, sweet. See, I always, I always associate incense with cold. Like I find it to be a cold Okay, okay. So well, to I'll have me, to burn some incense for you then. I have some Japanese yeah. incense here. Just the incense that I've smelt in perfumes. Yes. Not like, I actually haven't really done a whole lot of incense okay. in the room. Maybe that's the, your next that's my trouble. <laughs> incense is a really fun thing to smell. It's really. Yeah, like I remember smelling like a cheapo, you know, whatever incense, but. Yeah. But to me, when I've smelt incense, or what I perceive as mm. incense in a fragrance, to me it comes across as cold. Mm. There, so, you make an interesting point because there are cold resinous materials. Right. Like myrrh is a leathery, suede, bitter, cool material. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that you should say that it's cool because the Egyptians would burn myrrh or people living in very, very hot areas of the world would burn myrrh during the day when it was the hottest part of the day oh. to give a cooling effect. Okay. I mean, similar to like vetiver has like a coolness to it. Yeah. So and in, a dryness. And a dryness. And so in, in India, um, they will take vetiver roots and hang them in front of the windows, douse them with water. And then when the heat of the day comes through the vetiver roots, it gives a cooling effect oh, to things. Interesting. It does make a difference. Yeah. And in Japanese gardens, Japan gets extremely hot in the summertime. You'll notice when you go in there, there's no red flowers. There's no orange flowers. It's all green. Oh, okay. And it's always centered around a cool pond. So you can play with these sort of contrasts. Like I think when people smell incense, most of the time they're thinking of like cloves and sandalwood and benzoin and maybe Indian incense, which is a very sweet thing. Right. Or patchouli kind of has, I think patchouli is a midway. It can be cool and warm, I think, yeah. kind of. Maybe a little cool actually, but... Um, I Anyways. find patchouli to be a little bit more warm, like, mm. well, depending. I find depending. patchouli to be a little bit spicy, can be a little bit chocolatey. Yeah, 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 for sure. Depending. Yeah. Or it can go almost oud-like to me. 
Yes. So okay, that's, so out of yeah. the, the two of them, the rose one, definitely, I really, that's a really... Yeah, that's the most expensive one. Yeah. <laughs> she has expensive taste. Like, I like the lavender one, too. And it's interesting because it smell, I find they're, that the rose one is now nice. more uni, unisex. Yeah. It's not masculine. I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the filming today. Okay. I'll be filmed another day. <laughs> My uh, hands have come into the scene a few times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so switching over to warmth, right? We were talking yeah. about cool versus warm. This is definitely the warmest perfume. I've ever and which one's that one? This is the deer musk. People can buy it uh, from me with natural deer musk if they want. Yeah. Or just a uh, synthetic deer musk accord. But to be honest, there's not a huge difference in the, in the scent because I spent a long time crafting like, I know how to craft a pretty good synthetic deer musk accord. Mm -hmm. Anyways, they just have to send me an email and say, hey. I want the real thing. Me. Yeah, yeah. So. This is very, very warm. It's very sweet. It's got honey. It's like got beeswax absolute. Okay. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, yeah. sometimes beeswax is weird for me, but we'll I can see. show you some. I have some here, like the actual material. Yeah. I can show you beeswax absolute. It's got a material in here called phenyl acetic acid, which is really interesting. It's found in insects. I don't know if you ever, ever like a bad little kid, you ever take like red ants and squish them? Never. Right. Could never you do lie. it. Right. No, I literally could never do really? it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> All living creatures. No, <laughs> no, but I literally didn't. Okay. But. <laughs> so, I did not. All right. Remember so, ever doing that. if you were in, uh, if you were a boy, yeah, and you, and you squish ants. <laughs> Or if you get honeysuckle, okay, okay, flowers, and you smell them, and deep inside them, it's so sweet, it's almost bitter, right, and musky. That's what phenyl acetic acid is. It's a natural material; it's just been isolated. As far as I understand, the phenyl acetic acid is actually in flowers. There's a ton of it in honeysuckle. Um, right. There's a little bit in rose, I think, too. Right. We used to have some ferrets, and it smells. Exact, very similar to ferret musk. Okay. It's very sweet and honey-like, almost to the point where if you take honey or sugar, you burn it on the stove, or maple sugar, more like dark maple syrup where you cook it so much and it just before getting bitter. Okay. So there's a lot of crossover between honey, between balsamic vinegar, between honey and wood, between honey and the scent of squished ants. And I tried to capture all of that in this perfume. Of course, um, along with that, it, in the requested perfumes, I'll put a tincture of um, deer musk okay. pod here. Um, and then um, beeswax absolute uh, and a couple other things. I think to use some jasmine absolute, which is very, very honey-like sometimes as well. Right. And this also has tonka bean okay. and benzoin. And um, again, for people that don't mind the animus, I'll put in civet paste, civet musk. And this essentially is kind of like a long last type of perfume that um, wealthy aristocratic uh, socialites in, in Paris, the ladies would wear on the inside of fur coats. So you oh. have fur on the outside. Okay, so you have fur on the outside. And on the inside of the fur coat, you would always have like suede or like the real animal skin on the inside. Right. Which would rest against your collarbone and your skin up around here right and you have the combination of you know human sweat with fur right and they would wear these types of ambery honey um perfumes one of the uh perfumes i think it's it's tonka something by guerlain okay i think that's kind of a reflective of these mm -hmm. old winter night amber deer musk and uh, and 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 um, tonka bean type of fumes, but this is closer to the original formulas. You are considering this more of a vintage or like a, a his. I, I hate to History, use that yeah. word historical. I would yeah. use that term. I think so. I'm totally self-taught. The only formulas that I had to study from the textbooks that I had to study from when I first started off was like free domain right vintage formulas that okay I could actually find okay and interesting so i was forced actually to study old french formulas before anything else right and so i still love old 
vintage. So brands. you fell in they, love with I love them. They're the best. I they're, think that's awesome. Yeah, no, they're very, very good. Um, because, yeah, they're very interesting to play with. Uh, the trick with them is like to give a central theme to the perfume. They use an incredible amount as compared to today's perfumes. A lot of bass notes compared to today's perfumes. Yeah. They would only, they like if uh, a French perfume from like 1919 or something might have like three or four different musks to choose from. One of which is probably musk ketone, which is really an interesting, it's a beautiful musk. Um, and so they were limited by the number of materials, but they could craft really interesting, really good stuff. Um, it's a, it's a specific type of perfumery. Anyways, you'll be able to smell it's, you can smell, there's a urine oh, in this. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's definitely my most animalic, most sexual, most uranus. It doesn't come across as urine to me. Yeah. But on the skin, if you think about, yeah, but you can't, I, I have to say it like in a, I don't even know in a good human way like it smells like uh it's freaking sexy yeah 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 not not in a bad way there there's no. a cross people would never notice this until you tell them but there is a cross between urine and honey smell. right no i totally agree yeah. because yeah. Uh, like honey Oh, okay, yeah, my piece. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. To, well, oftentimes I, I, when I smell honey, I instantly think urine. Okay. Always, yeah. actually. <laughs> but not, I shouldn't say that because some honeys don't come across that way. To me, this doesn't smell, it, it may go urine-y on my skin, mm. uh, but that is really cool. Yeah. It's got, um, Deer Musk also has... Uh, a suede woody dark angle to it if you can smell it's like a woody suede type of um yeah. scent to it that's also commonly found in oud that is really 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 cool yeah so the datura you haven't smelled it yet no. um sorry i haven't even put the top on it's very rare raw and naked this is my newest perfume look at that bottle guys yeah Love it's, it. it's not dressed up yet i haven't put the cap on and stuff right but, um this is the death's head moth uh-huh the reason that I included this is because the Datura flower itself yeah. is very deadly, yeah. but also a beautiful smelling perfume. And it only comes out at nighttime under the moon. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know night... that. That's cool. Yeah, the Datura flower, it's a family of flowers. It's these giant bell-shaped white flowers. They look like giant um, morning glories. They grow often... Uh, well, wherever you plant them, actually. Some of them are really short. Some mm -hmm. of them are tall. Some of them grow in big bushes, like tall, stocky things, and they hang down like trumpets. I think another name for them is called the trumpet flowers. Oh, okay. But they're really impressive looking flowers, and they come out only... At, some of them are actually day-blooming, but um, this particular datura is night blooming. Okay. There's these datura growing on the outside of a temple called Kokedera, which is uh, the moss temple, a really famous temple. It's absolutely beautiful. I'll have to show you a video of it. I'll show you guys Kokedera. Um, so you can imagine, I was like up at like five o'clock in the morning. I don't even think like, the moon's still in the sky, right? And I'm wandering around the outside of Kokedera and I could smell the sandalwood incense right really sweet sandalwood incense um and then you walk by these flowers that are very very honeysuckle smelling and it's a combination of sandalwood and honeysuckle it creates almost like a ginger effect so anyway so i tried to capture the smell uh of this perfume again the moth is a night pollinating uh, bug, I guess. Right. Moths at night, under the moonlight, you know, um, night blooming flowers, and the very, very early morning and the smell of the incense is what it kind of the atmosphere that I was trying to capture with this one. This perfume, I think 20% of the formula is sandalwood, and I used real sandalwood in this one. Okay. I showed Sinyanta, uh, which makes it 
uh, very expensive. Mm-hmm. So the profit margin, it's okay. I'm not going to die or anything like that. But people <laughs> should buy it if they want to get a good deal. It's it's quite a, it's quite a you know it's quite a expensive it was a formula. labor of love and <laughs> yeah yeah. So it's kind of a vision that I wanted to carry out. It's it's an interesting perfume. It's very long lasting. Okay. So she opens up with an accord of ginger and bergamot with ylang ylang and frankincense. So the combination actually of frankincense, ylang ylang and bergamot and ginger creates really a honeysuckle ginger flower type scent that okay. smells like the datura. And then once it dries down, you get the sandalwood. Oh, okay. And because it's real sandalwood, if you spray it on your clothes, You'll be uh, like literally be able to smell it a month later. Really? Yeah. And you've smelled this one. I have them smell it again. Mm. It's a good one. This one, I was like, I got lucky with this one, I think. So sandalwood has a really unique property to it. It smells very, very minerally and buttery at the same time. Do you feel like it smells a little bit green? Because there's th- th- this green tone when I smell um, sandalwood, like when it's mainly sandalwood in a fragrance. Yeah. Maria should smell the sandalwood you used in this on its yeah. own. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd love smell. to. Yeah. Give me a second. Let me bring it up. Yeah. Okay. So let me put some... Oh, that was pure... where my rose was. Oh, doesn't okay. matter. Uh, let me you're, out of, you're out of space, girl. You could, you okay. could use my legs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 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 So we got. So some... that's so. Smell that. That's real sound. Oh, oh, oh! Right. That's like. It's strong. Okay, so you try to explain what real sandalwood smells like. It's to me. It's still really quite green. Okay. It smells. Well, it smells moist. <laughs> it smells so moist. moist. Wouldn't you say buttery too? Yes. Minerally, do you think minerally, like all maybe almonds too? It's very unique. Scent is a language. Yeah. Okay. And it's uber su- sugary. Yeah, yeah, it's uber sugary. So you, you'll be able to smell it like right away. It's very, it's just very Oh, fun. oh, yeah. I love that one. <laughs> okay, that's right up my alley. Yeah. Sugar it, central. Yeah, it's. It just happens. <laughs> that one's I like awesome. to play with all sorts of different materials. Yeah. And I like to see how they match up with each other. Yeah. So this is kind of like a passion fruit material. Yeah. Langy lang and then like tuberose. Guys, this one's delicious. What's it called again? Scent is a language. It's awesome. Yeah, it's it's very delicious. That's it's really like, fun. That, that's a good word to Yeah. Mouth watering. Mouth watering, juicy passion fruit opening. Yeah. And then tropical florals through the middle. And then actually dries down to like a super sugary amber, like a cotton. Oh, basically okay. cotton like, candy. C- cotton candy and um there's quite a bit of a material called cashmere I put in there. Okay. And it's a fluffy, um, powdery, very fun material to yeah. play with. Cashmere is a very interesting thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, that one's really fun. Yeah. I can get a couple of raw materials for you. To- yeah. Here's my laboratory. It's actually very small. Um, in here. So I've got all, all sorts of different materials in boxes. <laughs> In here, I'm not the most organized human being. So this is actually where I make my perfumes and I formulate things in here. There's a variety of attars that I'm working on at the moment. And just some bottle designs. These are already cut, like it's got cut glass. Oh, that's neat. Here's a new bottle for Mushin. I don't know, you can see that. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's got like a lotus flower on it. And so I usually formulate on the desk here, and it's just like mixing cocktails, basically. (laughs) Uh, Kind of. Um, It's pretty fantastic view while you're mixing. Yeah, yeah. And you can see I've got my fan, it's constantly on. (laughs) I bet. I try to keep everything in bottles, just not so I like completely kill myself with scent. But in here I've got materials that I keep cold yeah, like top hot. note a lot of like citrus materials so and, and you keep those in the freezer yeah to keep them fresh okay yeah so there's like you know bergamot lemon right just is i don't know this is kind of a grapefruit smelling thing this is an apple smelling thing this is kind of like a bitter grapefruit smelling material green oh i love it yeah so it's infinite number of combinations that you can craft and then in here it's like 
middle notes are materials that I just want to keep cool. Right. Sometimes really expensive materials because I want to keep them super fresh. Fresh. Um, and books and uh, that I've collected over time. This is the, the, the mad scientist. <laughs> I, mean, I love it. Yeah. It's awesome. Okay. This is Coumarin. Okay. You can smell that. It's like... It's kind of like a spicy cherry, freshly cut hay. Isn't that bizarre? Right? It's... I do get the cherry. Yeah, it's like freshly cut hay. It smells a lot like marzipan, too. Yeah. Uh, almond. Um, That's it's kind of I, a cool, I, spicy, sweet. Mm, if you don't want to use uh, vanilla, you can use this. But it's different than vanilla. Can um, I smell it again? It was originally put in... Um, Kumarin was a synthetic material, I think made around 1888 by some Germans. And I think they were trying to like create TNT or something. They ended up making <laughs> Kumarin. This is Kumarin crystals. So the Fougere I'm... would not exist without the Kumarin. So this is often paired with lavender. Oh, okay. To make a Fougere. Yeah. Or it's, this is called Sutilox, but it's basically Ambroxan. Okay. And really beautiful very very dry wood mineral yeah. salt smelling um it's quite nice then i collect all sorts of different things people send me oud here's some japanese incense i'll have to burn some this is some cheaper japanese incense um, and people send you oud yeah people send me all sorts of oud what do you think of this one if you yeah. dream then dream about oud if you dream dream no if you dream then dream aloud Oh, dream aloud. Yeah, so here's a bunch of different runes that people send me. Let's see. All sorts of different kinds of runes. And oh, I see. Of okay. And... So as you can see, it kind of ended abruptly. The bottom line is time got away from us. We had no idea what time it was and we needed to go eat. Like we ended up talking forever. So anyway, thoroughly enjoyed it. Look forward to maybe getting together with him sometime in the near future and having more chats. I'd like to do the same thing with Sonata. Personally, I find it really interesting to hear from the perfumers. So anyway, uh, thank you, Matthew, for being willing to sit down and share the way that you did. Really appreciated it. And have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.